way to tie-dye pillowcases using ice, hence the song, is Vanilla Ice Ken himself. Oh, why, thank you, why, thank you. Uh, yeah, I did this last summer, and I thought it was so much fun, and it's a great way to sort of take old or stained pillowcases or new ones sure. and create really a custom fabric to sort of work. It's great for the summer, it's great for outdoors. I mean, I know all about tie-dyeing, but I never would have thought to use ice. It's usually vinegar. Right. It, it, ice gives it a very distinctive quality, uh, and it's fun. It's really fun, and it's easier. It's easier and less messy oh, that's than tie-dye. That can be, get yeah. very messy. So besides the ice and some old pillows, what else will we need? You're going to need powder dye. So that's very important. It's powder dye, not the liquid dye. It comes in these little boxes. Okay. Um, and then you're going to need soda ash. You can get soda ash at any um, craft store, fabric store, etc. What exactly is soda ash? Soda ash, it will be in a little bag like this. Okay. and it's sodium carbonate. So what you want to do is wash your pillowcases first if they're new and then soak them. It'll come in a little bag to a gallon of water and soak your pieces in this for about 20 minutes. What that's going to do is that's going to change the pH balance and let the dyes attach. If you've ever done tie-dye and then it continues to like right. fade or mm -hmm. leak or bleed, this helps to prevent oh, that. It really so helps the dye the attach to oh, the, it makes the dye attach much better. So you want to soak that for 20 minutes. Okay. Then Once what? you've done that, you're going to take it out and here's where you can sort of have fun. Like I did one that just going to like bunch it up. Now here I have a, a cooling rack on a, on a bucket. Okay. Um, doesn't really matter what cooling rack, what bucket, but that's going to keep it from getting messy. Like, and you can do different things. One I'm going to bunch and then another one I'm going to take out of this and I am going to, you want to not dry them and I'm going to, if you can see this, I'm just going to Fold. Fold it, it. So to give it a different fold design. It. Exactly. And you can really get as sort of funky as you want. Would you do like a Oh, and fold up that. like that. I'm would you fold it like that. do like a, a like you would do a tie dye shirt and put rubber bands in it? You could, but with this you don't really because the ice is going to do all of that work for you. Okay. Once you do that, you're going to actually get ice, good old bag from the from the corner store, and you are just going to pile it all over. You can't have too much. Ideally, you really want to get it so that you are covering. So the ice is the way to, to build the design right. on top of the folding. On top of the folding. Interesting. Um, so once you get it all covered, now you're going to build your colors. So the powder dyes will come like this. So I have a little bit of teal, and what you're gonna do is just sprinkle it. Oh so for the one gosh, that's bunched, cool. I'm gonna do it random. For the oh. one that's, that's folded, I'm gonna do more lines. So a little teal, then just a little bit of orange and see how this almost looks like like jello powder. Sure. Again, I'm gonna do some lines. So this is all gonna bleed together. Add in some a little bit of teal on the edges. And then just to give it some depth, I'm gonna take a little bit of gray and just put the gray oh, here and there. Ken, after looking at this, I'd be worried it's not gonna come out right. That's the fun part. So what you do, all that is done, you're all set, you see it starting to drip already, and then oh you just wait. For how long? Watch, you have a little <laughs> GoPro this waiting. It's really gonna depend wow. upon the warmth. It can take anywhere from 45 minutes to several hours, depending upon where you are. You just do nothing. And what happens now, right. as the water's melting, it's combining the, like, the blues and the yellows will combine to make greens. It'll run, it'll rivulet, and really sort of takes on this whole dynamic thing yourself. So you just leave it and you come and back you're and this is what with you this. And then what you want to do is not touch it for about 24 hours. So do it and just leave it. Let it dry. Leave it outside? Leave it outside. Let it for 24 hours. And that's really going to let the dye set. So then, before you even hang it, you Before just you even hang it, just let it. That's very okay. important. Then, I've already done this with this, you want to run it under cold water until the water runs clear. So it seals in. So right. So you leave. get all the excess. And then you're ready to reveal... Are you ready? Do you yeah, want to? Uh... I want to see this. Oh, that's beautiful. Really, you really get sort of these amazing. And if you look, look at them, at you can really see. Let's hang them up How over here to dry. How different they are. Right, because of the the different techniques, you really end up with different sort of <sighs> feelings. Mine is the crumpled one, and as you can see, it almost looks like a Monet painting, like water lilies. That's and with yours, beautiful. you get these. You get the sort of verticality a much more geometric of the stripes. And once you do this, and once they, they, they fully um, dry after the cold, you can wash them warm water, they will and not bleed. And it's never gonna bleed. Right, because you did the soda ash, the soda and you ash. let them sit for the 24 hours. So the soda ash is really right, key it's very otherwise key. you have to use vinegar or something. Right. Could you do this on um, anything that wasn't cotton? You wanna use 100% cotton, or you can also use 100% silk, but you don't wanna do polyester, because the fibers are not gonna accept 
the dye. So this is like an inexpensive $4 white pillowcase. It is you know? so beautiful too.